Our distinguished colleague from Isabela and Davao region, uh, Senator Idol Rafi Tulfo, is recognized. Good afternoon, Mr. President and my dear colleagues. It is with great hope and joy that I say to our seafarers, all hands on deck, malapit na po tayong dumaong. Matapos ang labing limang taon mula na nag, nang na-file ang unang panukalang Magna Carta for Filipino Seafarers, kinagagalak ko po na tayo ay nalalapit na sa dulo ng ating paglalakbay. Ang batas na ito ay pasasalamat natin sa ating mga seafarers. And it is but timely that this week we celebrate the National Maritime Week. In 1996, President Fidel V. Ramos issued Proclamation Number 866, Series of 1996, which declared the last Friday of September as National Maritime Day. At that time, our government recognized that the Philippine maritime industry was growing tremendously and is expected to be globally competitive in due time. This came true with the surge of Filipino seafarers being deployed overseas to board foreign registered vessels. <coughs> Through the years, the global shipping industry has relied on the Filipinos to man their vessels. In 2022 alone, 489,852 Filipino seafarers were deployed. This is 25%, again, this is 25% of the world's total 1.9 million strong seafarers. With this number comes the incidental benefit to the Philippine economy for the remittances of our seafarers. In 2019 alone, it was estimated that Filipino seafarers remitted 6.5 billion U.S. dollars to the Philippines. This is practically 1.7% of the country's GDP that year. And so, I honor our seafarers. My dear seafarers, we know that this will protect the industry that has provided for your families. We will ensure that we will comply with MLC 2006 and STCW as a message to the international community that we are committed to keeping with the highly regulated international standard of the industry. With this law, we have mandated the pertinent government agencies to work on implementation of the provisions of the Magna Carta. And finally, this law will serve as the Bible of our seafarers in knowing and enforcing their rights. And while there are distinctions between overseas Filipino seafarers, domestic Filipino seafarers, and fishers, whether on domestic or international fishing vessels, I guarantee you that we have not forgotten you. I'm working closely with DMW to ensure that your rights, as provided in other international conventions, will be protected. To our fishers, we will pass the necessary laws that will institutionalize your industry, addressing, in particular, the concerns of your craft. But Mr. President, I stand here before you today, most specially to make a strong stand against ambulance chasing. Ito pong ambulance chasing ang salut sa industriya ng mga seafarers at maning industry. Dahil po dito, sa mga ganid na ambulance chasers, iniiwasan na po ang ating mga magagaling at mahusay na seafarers. Hindi na po tayo ang unang choice ngayon. May mga pagbabanta na po na boboykotin na tayo kapag hindi natin gagawa ng paraan itong ambulance chasing. Ang mahirap po kasi sa manning industry natin, magandang binipisyo pagdating sa death, illness, at disability benefits. Umabot po sa 60,000 US dollars o 3.3 million pesos ang maaring makuha ng isang seafarer na nagkasakit o na disgrasya. Ang mga ambulance chasers po ay pinaproject ang mga seafarers. 
kasabwat ang mga doktor, mga abogado, at mga arbiters upang mapilit ang seafarer na magsampa ng kasong wala namang basihan. At kapag nakuha na nila ang parte nila, pag nanalo na sa NLRC o NCMB level, sila ay naglalaho na parang bula. Kapag nabaliktad ang desisyon at kailangan ibalik ang reward, as of 2022, may 2.576 billion pesos na hindi na ibalik na halaga sa mga mining industry. Sa tulong po ng DMW at ng mga representante ng mga seafarers at ng ilang, ilang mining agencies, ako po ay may amendment na ipapasa sa Magna Carta upang ayusin ang problema ng ambulance chasing. Ang, ang escrow po ay stopgap measure, isang ban aid solution na hindi magtatagal. Nais ko pong ayusin ang problema sa ugat nito upang tunay ng matugis ang ambulance chasing. I will propose a system of determining the disability grading by accredited DOH doctors who have been trained in maritime disability grading. This process shall be mandatory before any case could be filed. The fin findings of this doctor shall be final and binding upon the parties. Ayon po sa mga nakausap ko, ito ang mas mabisang paraan upang matigil na po ang ambulance chasing. Ito ang regalo ko sa ating mga seafarers ngayong National Maritime Week. A protection to the industry that they love. The industry that has taken care of them and their families. I hope to get the support of my colleagues on this amendment and on the passing of this bill into law. Malapit na po tayo. Let's all look forward and see a better future for our seafarers. Thank you, Mr. President and my dear colleagues.